As I mentioned in my other video about these, I didn't just buy this pack of these two things. I also bought a bunch more. Um, I misspoke before, I actually bought three more. So I got four in total. And so yeah, they come in this, came along in this box here. Um, they, they had like foam packing, uh, bu bubble wrap packing, I mean, around these ones. Unlike uh, the first one I bought, which, which didn't really get any wrapping, but it was inside the big big box is okay anyway so these ones here um you open it up and you see um they've each got the same little earphones and with the hooks for over the ear as before so hey this stuff um now i thought i'd take a bit of a deeper look into one of these now, I'm only just kind of running this off my memory because I don't really own any G3s and it's been a couple of years since I've used the Sennheiser G3s because I much more prefer the Sony wireless, the UWP D11s, although they've just been updated to a newer model. What are they called? The UP um, D21s, I think is the, the, the new number. Anyway, I much more prefer those Sonys as a lower budget sort of sub 1K market than the G3s for various reasons that I'm not going to get sidetracked just now. Um, so anyways, I'm just kind of doing off my memory from when I last used G3s, which I kind of very rarely do. But um, um, but yeah, it does look like very similar. And um, this, is sort of, this is sort of plasticky here. And this does feel like metal on the back. It feels cold to the touch and sort of tap at it. And, uh, but yeah, I, um, which is kind of what I remember from the G3 Spain, that they were a metal back and then the plastic front front, front panel. And you've got the sort of bit buttons in the same place and the on-offs. Wait, where is on-off? Oh yeah, on-off is at the top here, because <laughs> you dial here. But yeah, on the actual G3 talent packs, you have the on-off underneath here. Um, but yeah, so when you compare it to the IMEs the, from Sennheiser, I do recall their knob being slightly fatter well, this one is quite thinner. I mean, maybe that's a negative here, but not really any big deal. I mean, it's fine. Um, another difference is that, do you see the sort of cone ribbing it has around the top? Um, that's different too than on the G3, the, the, the genuine one. But if anything, I think this is a good thing. It means this, when you sort of bend this, it's gonna be less stress at one point it'll be more spread out so I definitely think this is a good feature about that compared to the originals. Um, we've also got these little soft pads here so when you put a battery in it will uh, sort of sit in more firmly. I'm not sure if the G3 had that, I don't think so but if so that's another little small nice detail. Um, I don't know, what else can I really say? Well I've got this, um, my friend's uh, TV remote, so I'm going to cannibalize a couple of batteries from her remote so I can demonstrate. Next step, I'm going to actually turn it on for the first time. It'd be fun if it fails to do so on camera. Oh, look, it turns on already. I must have had this switch on. Oh, yeah, so if it's already switched on up here, it'll automatically turn on. It's good. And yeah, and it lights up orange so you can see it in the dark. Although, when I do any more button pre. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. So it does actually backlit, so that, that's good. It's one thing you might have worried that maybe they were cheaping out to not backlighting stuff. Um, so you can use it in the dark, and yeah, I'm, I can change my channels that I'm set to. Um, yep, so, cool. And then when I change the channel, it tells me what frequency it is. So for instance, I just changed it to 582 megahertz. It's got a battery indicator there, th three fill bars. Um, it's also got a battery up here for low battery on, so I presume if this goes down it should hopefully turn on. Um, what else can I really say about it? I guess it... Hmm... Where are any more settings? Escape... It does... Oh, excuse me. The compliments to the coffee maker. It does seem there are no more settings here than just simply the option to change what frequency you're on. So yeah, pretty basic. So yeah, basically just the options to change what frequency you're on and you can 
see how much battery life there is. That is all it does, unless, you know, I read the manual and find out if they're here. So, so yeah, if you buy them just by themselves and not in that big box with the, with the transmitter, um, you're not getting any manual coming with it. So um, I've only got the one manual that came with the other one. And does the manual even talk about the transmitter? Oh, it does. Cool. And um, low volume peak. Oh, yeah. It does have this volume peak indicator light. Eight point. That's not the volume peak. In, that's the RF. Yeah. Anyway, um, there's a mute switch on it. Oh, it's talking about the body pack transmitter. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been able to find these body pack transmitters on AliExpress. I need to have like another deep dig look around. Because I can't seem to find the body. Anyway, we should be looking at the body pack receiver. That's the indicators. Um, but yeah, no, it, it um, does, doesn't have, have much of that to talk about. So yep, yeah, that's, that's everything. We've uh, pretty much finished a look at it for now. Until I actually go out and use it for real. Um, any questions, feel happy to uh, ask me down below and I'll answer to the best of my abilities about this uh, Lay, Lay Kozik SR2050. <laughs> See ya.